So let's make it more concrete. Let's assume we have this query. What do we do to start dynamic programming is we start by computing optimal subplans for the individual relations. We have four relations and I mark them here in this table. This table keeps the current state of dynamic programming and you already see the space requirements are 2 to the power of n because 2 to the power of n is the size of the subsets. All possible subsets of a set of size n have this size so this is actually the size, the space complexity of dynamic programming space complexity. Okay, so we keep this table for four relations. I here always mark with an X the relation that takes part in this entry. So an X here means I list here as best plans plans that I consider to access relation A. The so general pro dynamic programming algorithm in databases operates in two steps. It first collects the possible plans, the possible best plans for accessing relation A. And then in the second step, some of the plans are pruned. So let's do it in two steps. Here you see multiple plans, multiple options for accessing relation A. And you see here, this is a scan, scanning relation A. This is a seek, so this is really an index access where only parts of the pages, part of the data is accessed exploiting attribute a1 so we go back here we see there's a filter condition on a1 and this is basically exploiting an existing index on attribute a1 i assume that an index like that exists here's another option that's an index sequential access method so this is scanning the entire index however in sort order with respect to our id why would that make sense well, we have a join condition here on ID, so maybe we could exploit that for a sort merge join later on. However, you will see for the moment in this example, I assume that there are no interesting orders, which means in the second step, I will only keep the optimal plan. So what I assume is really this optimality principle to, ex to its maximum, which means for every subset, I keep the best plan. So that is a vanilla application of dynamic programming, which we, we will extend later on. But for the moment, I only keep the best plan here. So in a, I do that for each and every input individually. I list the number of access methods, and then I have to prune them. Then I say for each and every subplan, I only consider one of the inputs. So for instance, for relation A, I only use this index axis. For relation B, I only use this index axis on attribute 3 of relation B. Here I take the scan, here I take this other in the index axis for whatever reason. Yeah. Of course, in order to make such a decision, in order to be able to prune some of the plans, I have to have good estimates. So here you really need cost models. Cost models that predict the expected costs. That's very important here, otherwise you can't prune the plans. You could, I mean, in some situations you could prune even without cost models. For instance, if you know that this is accessing a primary key column, then the index access as a heuristic might make sense in most of the situations. But, but those estimates could go pretty wrong because they depend heavily on selectivities and stuff like that. So cost models here are really important. We prune those options here. So let's really kick them out. And now it looks like that. For each of the input tables, we have exactly one input. So in the next step, we will look at plans having two inputs. So those are the options. So what's the number of subsets here? It is n choose k, which in this case is 4 choose 2 which happens to be 4 factorial 2 factorial 4 minus 2 factorial which is something like um, 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial which happens to be 2 times 3 which is 6. So 6 different subsets and that is what I'm displaying here. So here those combinations are computed by combining those plans. So I have an I seek on A1 of A and an I seek of A3 of B, and that is what I combine here. 
So here I try out different join orders. So I can put this on the left or I can put it on the right. And of course, it's not only, of course, it's not only a single logical join I put here. I can also try out the different physical join algorithms I have. So here I'm trying out simple hash join. I'm ignoring merge joins for the moment here. But so in the general case, you try out all the different physical join algorithms to combine those two inputs. But basically what you do is, this in the middle is just a variant of a plus. Yeah? This combination, this concatenation symbol is here implemented using simple hash join or whatever. You could have an index nested loops join or whatever, the mer sort merge join if you want. And with all different join orders. That is what you try out here. And you do that for each and every subset of size 2. You list the different options here. And then you cost them in the next step. Because again, we prune them. We only keep some of them. Maybe we kick out this here for whatever reason. Because we find out that this is cheaper. Or the estimated costs of that are less than this one. So again, after pruning, we might be in a situation like that. CP here means cross product. A and C cannot be combined by a join directly, it's a cross product. But again, let's keep it. So once you're done with that, you compute all the subplans of size 3. That is what happens here. And take care, you can of course compute that by combining an A, B plan. So by taking this and adding up the missing C, that is one way of combining that. But of course, there are two others. You could also look at this one and concatenate it with A, or you can look at this one and concatenate it with the optimal B subplan. So there are already three ways of coming up with this one. And then again, you have all these options for join orders and the different implementations of the join algorithms. So you do that here for each and every subplan of size 3. And once you're done with that, you can, of course, compute a subplan of size 4. In other words, a subplan that has all the four different inputs. And from that, you take the best option. And once you did that, you're done. Let's look at the pseudocode. How does it work? In dynamic programming, you take n relations as the input and you have a cost function that is important for pruning. So as explained in the example, what we do is we first compute the optimal access plan for each of the input relations with respect to the specific query. So we already consider the filter conditions that may exist. So it's not just something you can do once for every query, this of course has to factor in the specific selections that occur, ideally even the projections, because they may also make a difference depending on the database system, the, the data layout you're using. So what you do is you compute this optimal plan. That is the table I showed above. Maybe let's go back. So this is a table I'm using here, and this is basically the key in the table. And those are the, and this is the entry with a set of best plans. So that is what I'm doing here. I say for a plan that only considers input RI, I compute the access plan. I, I take all the access plans for that specific relation. So that would be scan, would be index access. So the index seek and the index scan with an index sequential access method. And then in the second step, you prune those entries to only take one of the plans, which is the plan with the lowest costs. That is the, the core idea of dynamic programming. So once you did that, now you have the optimal plans for subsets of size one. Now you combine them iteratively into bigger subplans. That is what we've seen in the example already. So what you do is you take subsets that have this property, the subset should have a size of 2 in this case. So we have a loop running from plan size 2 to n, which is a maximum plan size. And then what we do is, from our input relations, we look at all subsets that exist, all subsets of size plan size, which in the first iteration is 2. And then what we do is, we take subsets again from that subset, which is not so interesting if it's size 2, because see, you can only take subsets of size 1. That makes sense. Of course, it should also be non-empty, the subset. The size of O, of course, is at least 1. And of course, it's limited by the size of S. So it also holds, of course, that O is strictly smaller than the size of S. Those are the conditions that hold here. So you do that 
And then for this subset S, you try to find the optimal plan by merging optimal subplans. You see it here. So we have an optimal subplan for O. This can be taken directly from the table. This is just reading the table, this entry here. And you combine this optimal subplan with another optimal subplan, which provides the optimal plan for the complement. So if you have a couple of relations here, some subset of S, yeah, which is a subset of R1. So let's make it more concrete. Assume S is whatever, R1, R7, R4. Let's assume this is S. R4 and um, whatever, R5. So we have S has a size of four. So let's look at one of the subplans here. Let's look at one of the O's we're in currently. So O could be something like, um, let's say R7, comma R5. Okay, and then it's clear, it's complement S minus O. So the complement then is everything that's here, but not here. So it's R1 and R4. R1 and R4. Okay, here we go. So what you do here in this line is you merge the optimal subplan combining those two relations, which you already computed in the previous round for plan size two. Yeah, if you assume we are in plan size four now, you combine this optimal subplan with this optimal subplan for R1, R4, which was also computed in this previous round. So you merge those two into a bigger plan. Here the optimality principle kicks in saying, okay, once I have the optimal subplan for this subset and I have the optimal subplan of this subset, I can somehow combine them. If you have a joint condition among the two, then you can use the joint condition. If you don't, you use a cross product. That is a rule. So here it's just a matter of merging those two subplans into a bigger plan. And then you append that to this entry for S. So you extend the entry for S. Here in this line, you prune again. So once you're done with finding those plans, you only take the one with the lowest costs. So in the extreme case, if we ignore interesting orders, what we did in the previous example, we, we didn't look at specific. So in the extreme case where you only keep one optimal subplan, that's what I did in the previous example, then here you only take the entry here with the lowest estimated costs. Only one plan survives. Well, and, and then you keep on looping over that until this plan size is set to n, which is equal to the final query you're looking at. You do a final prune over that, then you return it, and then you're done. So that's the pseudocode for dynamic programming. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website Datenbankenlernen. .de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.